This is Omar Aisha for Wanda TV and uh, we're at the Fletix Labs, third demo day. I've got um, two of the founders of SolverMine with me. Uh, if you do introduce yourselves and explain what uh, SolverMine is, please. Sure. My name is Sabrina Awesome. I'm the CEO. My name is Noah Askar. I'm the Chief Operating Officer. Yeah. Basically what we do is introducing a web-based platform that links companies, non-profits and governments to external sources of solutions, external networks of problem solvers and innovators. We facilitate and manage the relationship between those entities in need for innovation and the sources that might come up with viable and qualified solutions. We make this in a, in a very unique form. We take the problems from those entities, we formulate them into a competition format and a word is being attached to each of the challenges and actually the crowd, the solvers are all invited to submit solutions and then the solution seeker, the entity, picks the best solution and awards the solver and this is basically what we do here. Okay, so what's to stop, um, surely companies are afraid of putting trade secrets, company secrets, you know, out there in the public, how do you get around this? Yeah, since we realize how important confidentiality is for each company, before they post any challenge on our website, we talk with them and they get to decide if they want to reveal their identity or if they'd rather keep it anonymous. Furthermore, since most companies don't want anyone to even realize the direction that they're researching is or the direction this problem is going at, we have a model where we can divide each big problem into several mini problems that could be worked on in parallel to uh, even like make even the problem even more vague so no one can even know the direction. Isn't there a danger that it becomes so, so vague that the problem ceases to be solvable? In a, in a practical of course, way. we're going to make sure that this doesn't happen. Any, there are certain models that we're going to like follow to make sure that this doesn't happen. Yeah. Okay, and what's to stop the company stealing solutions and not pay, you know not paying up? Yeah, first of all, to ensure that there is a price in the first place, we take the price amount upfront from the start from the solution seeker and host it in our escrow account just to ensure that there is a seriousness level in the procedure and then when the solver starts to be interested and actually wants to submit solutions the solver first reviews the intellectual property agreement and the confidentiality agreement and decides to either accept or decline the agreements if he decided to accept the agreement he would follow up with the submission form of the solution and in some cases and we are currently researching how to limit the amount of information that is going to be posted by the solver and how to just reveal an abstract that would actually prove that this is the solver and then when the seeker picks the solver maybe he'll try to contact him for further information and the solver uh, would be uh, would reveal the rest of the information and give the full solution to the seeker okay so have you because the theory is is really good um, but the devil's in the detail with, with yeah, something true. like this. Have you, has anything gone through from, have you tried it out, you know, beta tested it with an idea and sourcing some solutions? Well, well uh, we, there are other uh, models that are similar to us, that are successful, uh, but that are working on other networks like the US, Russia, and China. And the, the model works. For us, we already have clients that have problems that would work, but we can't say that we yeah, actually we dry run. Yeah. We didn't dry run it yet in the region, work. but it has been successful. Yeah, the thing is, and that's why actually we're we're, we're delaying the, the the launch because we want to ensure that there's first a legal framework that ensures that this process is going to be done in a in an acceptable manner. And the thing is. In order to do so, we, we have throughout the past uh, two months a lot of consultations with a lot of lawyers. Two lawyers in particular are drafting our IP and confidentiality agreements. Local and, lawyers? Yes, yes, local lawyers. But they're, I mean, like they're, they're familiar with the local and regional law and they're familiar also with the process outside because they're specialized in intellectual property. And uh, to add on, we are trying, we, we drafted a seeker contract already, and we are trying to review every single detail with the seeker. And that's why we're not going viral in getting a lot of challenges, but only selecting very few challenges to try out the process once we launch. So is your target market um, local to start with, uh, regional, or are you going to go for, for global peop um, players? Of course, eventually seekers? global, but for now we're targeting the region, especially that it's an untapped region. So this is something we want to explore more. No brain power has, has been like, tapped over here. 
other, other, there are networks outside that globally we're not going to restrict anything, of course. We're going to go global eventually, but for now we're starting in the MENA region. Yeah, and this is concerning the solvers, but the solvers network in particular. Yeah. But the secret network, no, it's we're targeting from, from the, the start the global <laughs> players. And also, in addition to the regional and the local. Okay, so how, how are you going to get um, over the trust issue? Because if you're a global player, you know that IP laws here are very weak and True. people don't respect them even when they're there. True. So how do you get over this? Yeah. When I talk to a global player and actually a global seeker, mm -hmm. uh, we actually tried several conversations with uh, those are not clients here and you actually talked with the PNG EMEA manager also from, from outside Egypt, from outside the region even. And uh, and yeah, and he stressed on the IP issue, but still, but still, PNG actually expressed a willingness to review and maybe try out something that might be si simple, a bit simple, to try out how it, mi it might produce something viable. Um, I totally agree that the IP laws here are very vague, but maybe an initiative like this will trigger somehow uh, certain pressure in order to properly formulate IP laws. And this is something we're trying actually to do with our lawyers. You know, they're very supportive and they're really great people and they give us a lot of insight and awareness on how to tackle each and every detail concerning here, of course, and, and globally. So what do you see as your biggest challenge in the next few months? Spreading awareness about several things, um, introducing a new concept that people are not aware of yet, and of course uh, on our side, like tackling all the little operational things, yeah. so we make sure that like something that might like seem trivial will not will not be a big obstacle later on. In it. Yeah, we want to keep the momentum. I mean, like this is this this is the biggest. This is the biggest challenge, is keeping the momentum. I mean, like, we're very high after Flat 6 Labs, but so the true challenge is actually continuing at the same spirit, especially that we as co-founders, we're still facing issues in coordinating how we're dealing with the startup, how it's going to be continued, and so on and so forth. And maybe either an investment is going to be injected, or maybe we can actually launch the business with few customers and a bit of a... a uh, unacceptable solvers network and this is actually the challenge keeping the momentum and starting the, the, the business in, in the right path okay. without an incubator and maybe yeah. reflecting like how maybe there are some loopholes or problems that need to be dealt with but how much something like solver mine could be a benefit mm -hmm. and how and like highlighting the, the benefit versus the risk of each party yes okay the most important question how are you going to make money <laughs> well, when the seeker decides to post a challenge, first of all, there are admin fees, basic admin fees that he'll uh, that he'll pay for. Uh, depending on the duration of the challenge, we take just two hundred pounds per week, uh, depending on the duration. And second of all, if he find, find, uh, found a viable solution for the challenge, we'll take a percentage out of, out of, out of the award. If it's higher than twenty thousand pounds, we'll take fifteen percent only. And if it's lower than twenty thousand pounds, we'll take twenty percent. The okay, um, you're um, the only all-female team, yeah. um, certainly through Flat6 Labs and through the teams I've been meeting. How have you found your experience being all females in a male-dominated society? Uh, very special, actually. Yeah. We're getting free marketing. <laughs> 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 no, it was very interesting to see like how everyone is supporting and pushing women to be more involved in the entrepreneurship uh, ecosystem. So for us, it was a very, very rewarding experience, actually. Yes, it was really rewarding. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much Thank for your time so and best of luck. Thank you.